What's up everybody, this is John with John Fair Innovations and I'm so excited to bring you today's video. So today I'm going to show you how you can use the distributive law to expand brackets. Now before I get into the video, if you enjoy it, do make sure you hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment on maybe another mass topic you'd like me to tackle, and if you really enjoy the video, do make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date for all the videos as they come out. Now, the distributive law is a multiplication technique that we use when we're dealing with brackets. And they're really helpful when we're using algebra. So when we have our x's, for example. So today, the problem that we're going to be solving is the bracket of x plus 1 to the power of 2. Now, before we tackle this one, what we're going to do is we're going to actually use distributive law to solve a bracket multiplication that has no variables in it. So no x's at the moment. So let's look at the problem of bracket 3 plus 2 multiplied by the bracket of 1 plus 1. Well, if we used order of operations, we would solve what's inside the brackets first. So we would do the additions and then we would multiply what we get to each other. So 3 plus 2 would give me 5 and then 1 plus 1 would give me 2 and then 5 multiplied by 2 would give me 10. So this is one way we can solve it, and it's great when we, ha when we have simply numbers. But when we have a variable in there, it gets a little bit tricky. So let's use distributive law to solve the exact same problem. And if we do it right, we should get the exact same answer as we just did. Well, when we're using distributive law, what we do is we look at the components of our brackets and we multiply them individually. So if we look at our first bracket, we've got a component of three, and we've got a component of 2. And in our second bracket, we've got a component of 1, and we've also got another component of 1. So we take our first bracket and we look at our first component, which was 3. And we multiply them individually by the two components of our second bracket. So 3 multiplied by 1 will give me 3. And then we do this again because the second number happens to be 1 as well. If it was a different number, we'd be multiplying by a different number. So 3 multiplied by 1, again, would give me 3. And now we repeat the process with the second component of our first bracket, which in this case is positive 2. So 2 multiplied by 1 will give me 2. And then 2 multiplied by our second one will also give me 2. So now we write it as we've got... 3 plus 3 plus 2 plus 2. Well, this is all addition. There's no multiplication. There's no uh, powers of. So we don't need the brackets anymore. So we can just simply write it as 3 plus 3 plus 2 plus 2. Well, 3 plus 3 will give me 6. 2 plus 2 would give me 4. And then 6 plus 4 would give me 10. So we've got the exact same answer using distributive law. And you'll find that it's actually super helpful when we're dealing with the problem that we're going to solve today, for example. Because inside the bracket, we've got x plus 1. Well, we can't simplify it like we did in our previous one. We had 3 plus 2, for example. We could add those together to make 5. If we have a variable and a number, these two can't be added to one another because x is an undefined, undefined number. We don't know what it is. So this is where distributive law comes in handy. So what we're going to do is we're going to firstly understand what we're talking about here when we've got this bracket x plus 1 to the power of 2. Well, inside the bracket are our components, which are x plus 1. And the little number outside the bracket actually represents the power of, which in this case, power of 2, which means that we're taking, we're taking our bracket and we're multiplying it by itself. That's what we mean when we mean power of 2. So if we had 6 to the power of 2, for example, that would be 6 multiplied by 6. If it was 6 to the power of 3, that would be 6 multiplied by 6 multiplied by 6. So make sure you keep an eye on what your power is of. In this case, it's power of 2. So we can rewrite this because this just means x plus 1 multiplied by itself. So we can rewrite it as the bracket of x plus 1 multiplied by another bracket of x plus 1. And now what we do is we take our components and we multiply them individually by our second bracket. So our first component of the first bracket is x. So firstly, we're going to x multiplied by x. Well, x multiplied by x is x to the power of 2, or x squared. 
So we can write that in in our next line of our solution. Nextly, we've got x multiplied by positive 1. Well, any number multiplied by 1 is just itself. So x multiplied by 1 is going to give me x. So we write that down in our part of our equation, our solution. And now we repeat the process with the second component of our first bracket, which was positive 1. So 1 multiplied by x is going to give me x. And then 1 multiplied by 1 would give me 1. So now our equation is going to read that it equals x squared plus x plus x plus 1. And now what we have to do is find our like terms if we can add any numbers or variables to each other. So firstly, we look at x squared. And as we can see from the rest of our numbers, we don't have any numbers that have an x to the power of 2. There's nothing that we can add to it. So that's going to remain the same. So we write that down in our next, in our next line. As we can see, though, we've got two x's to the power of 1. We've got x to the power of 1, and we've got another x to the power of 1. Keep in mind that when we write a variable and we don't put a power of next to it, we're just saying to the power of 1. So we can actually join these together. And let's say, for example, if you had one apple and you added another apple to it. Well, how many apples would you have? You'd have two apples. So this is the same as when we're dealing with x. So you have one x and you plus it to another x. We have two x. So now you can write in our next part of our line x squared plus 2x. And now lastly, we have to deal with our 1. Well, now we're looking to see if we can find any other numbers that don't have an x in them. Well, in this case, the only number left is 1, and 1 doesn't have anything to add or subtract with, so that's just going to remain the same as well. So we can write that as part of our solution. So now we've got that the bracket of x plus 1 to the power of 2 gives us, when we expand it, x squared plus 2x plus 1. Well, there you have it. You've used distributive law to expand a bracket. So do make sure you try it yourself because the best way to learn is through practice. But always, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Stay safe, be kind to one another, and I'll see you next time.